Good morning. Welcome to Victoria's Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. This week and last week, we have been talking about pride and humility. And yesterday, as this week, we've also been talking about the signs, the evidences, the characteristics of pride. And we have seen that pride blame shifts. Pride does not want to acknowledge your own fault in something. And yesterday the Lord led me by the spirit to talk about. There are those people who have taken blame and acknowledged their fault, but have then never received their own forgiveness. And they have lived under guilt for what they did wrong. And so the Lord wanted to help you and deal with that by saying, you need to get rid of it and get free to get your healing, to get your restoration, to get your wholeness. And we have to realize and understand that forgiveness is simple. It is simply, or let me say it like this, receiving forgiveness. All you do is you just acknowledge that you did wrong and say, Lord, forgive me. I was wrong. But then in your mind and in your heart, you lay that sin upon Jesus on the cross. Yes, it was 2000 years ago, but let me remind you. That in the spirit, in the kingdom of God, there is no time. Time does not exist. There is no past, present, and future. I talked a little bit about that in the study about king, the kingdom of God. It's timeless. It's timeless. It's timeless. Everything is now. It is the realm of the eternal now. So you can continue to lay things upon Jesus, your, your sin, your faults. It is a timeless realm. And so you lay it on Jesus and say, Lord, I give you that. I confess it. I acknowledge it. And your confession of it is your getting rid of it. It's when you get rid of it, you put it on him. And then you must accept and receive your forgiveness. Receive your forgiveness by faith. And re- remember and realize we read in Isaiah 53, 5 yesterday, where it says, He, that's Jesus, was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed For our iniquities, our sins, our iniquities, our transgressions, he was pierced. He was nailed to the cross. He was speared by the Roman spear. He had the thorns crushed down into his head for your sin and iniquity. He was punished. He took the penalty. So you don't have to punish yourself and you don't deserve a penalty. You don't have to pay a penalty. Jesus paid the penalty. Hallelujah. He paid the penalty for your sin. Then it says the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. That shalom Hebrew word shalom means wholeness. W H O L E wholeness. And it means nothing missing, nothing broken, wholeness in every area of your life, peace, prosperity, health, wholeness. It is all in there. The word shalom is a wholeness word. Wholeness. Nothing is missing. Nothing is broken. Everything is right. Everything is fixed in your spirit, your soul, your body, your mind, your finances, your family, your health. It's all made whole. That is peace. That is shalom. And the punishment that brought us shalom, wholeness, was upon him. 
he paid the penalty for you to be healed, forgiven, restored, made whole. Hallelujah. And by his wounds or by his stripes, it says we are healed. You can receive your healing because of his wounds for your healing. Hallelujah. Praise God. God wants, God loves you so much. I want you to know that. God loves you. God loves you so much. You're precious in his sight. You're beautiful in his eyes. You're adorable. You're the apple of his eye. You're the gleam of his eye. You are the song in his heart. You are the dance in his step. You are. Yes, you are. He loves you more than words could ever say. And you need to receive his love and you need to receive his forgiveness. And you need to forgive yourself and let go of all the past. And you need to have faith in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And I shared this in a teaching I've done before. If you want to hear more on this, you can go to the study on you are God's Valentine. It's about his love for you. You can go to the study on righteousness about how you are made righteous in him. You can go to the study on the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, how the power of that blood cleanses you from all sin and all unrighteousness. And how the Lord said to me one time years ago, when I just, I was having, everybody has condemnation until they learn how to get free. You have to learn how to get free. And so I was having condemnation for something. And the Lord spoke in my heart and said, Cherry, you have more faith in the power of your sin then you have faith in the power of my blood that cleanses your sin. You have to have faith in the power of the blood, the blood of Jesus that was sinless, the blood of Jesus that was the blood of the lamb that cleanses you from all unrighteousness. It is so powerful. It is so powerful. And, you know, one of the things that helps me sometimes if I'm needing to really feel a cleansing because condemnation makes you feel dirty and defiled. Sin defiles you and the condemnation, even after you've been forgiven, makes you continue to feel dirty. So you need to receive the cleansing power washing in the blood. Remember, you can go back to that study I gave. I don't have all of the scriptures in front of me, but how the, the blood of Jesus will wash you whiter than snow. It, though your sins are like scarlet, they will be whiter than snow. Isaiah forty three twenty five says, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. I blot out your transgressions for my sake. Why? Because your transgression is what separated you from him. So for his sake, he blotted it out to draw you near to him again. And he remembers your sins no more. And if God remembers your sins no more, then you must remember them no more. There is the ability to choose to forget. That is forgiveness. Forgiveness is releasing, wiping out the debt, and forgetting it. Releasing, releasing, wiping out the debt, and forgetting it. And in Isaiah 44, 22, Isaiah 44, 22, I have swept away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. You and also then this is the one I was quoting in Isaiah 118 Isaiah 118 says, 
Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. They shall be like wool. You know, and I started to say that one of the things that I do when I feel, I know God has forgiven me, but I need to feel clean. This is something that helps me. I start singing about the blood of Jesus. I encourage you to do it. Sing about the blood. You should, I said this in the teaching we gave on the power of the blood. You need to make much of the blood. Sing about the blood. Talk about the blood. But something like this, I would sing it, and it makes me feel the washing. Oh, it's the, the song of, Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. You know, something like that. I'm not trying to be a singer right here, but I had to give you an example. I sing this by myself. I sing a lot by myself. And I sing to the Lord. And I receive his love and his cleansing by faith. And I encourage you to do the same thing. It can help you to feel the embrace of the Lord, the cleansing of the Lord. Hallelujah. And you can also, like I said, sing about his love for you. You know, in our worship, we are always singing about our love for him. We love him. We worship him. We adore him. But we also have to remember that he loves us. He loves us. And sometimes we can sing one of those songs and turn it around like he's singing to us. And one of my favorite songs for that is an old chorus that we've sung for years about, Lord, you are more precious than silver. But I change it as though he's singing to me or to you. Let me listen. I want you to listen Right now, like he's singing to you. Child, you are more precious than silver. Child, you are more costly than gold. Child, you are more beautiful than diamonds and nothing I desire compares with you. So that is an example. It's not a perfect singing, but it's the Lord singing to you about how he loves you, how you're precious to him, more beautiful than diamonds, more costly than gold, more precious than silver. And he desires you. And so receive the love of God, the love of Jesus. Receive his mercy, which is boundless. His mercy, which is endless. His forgiveness that is without measure, unending. And receive it for yourself and say, I forgive myself and I release. And you also, with the same grace And mercy, you can forgive everyone who has ever wronged you. And that's back into what we've been talking about, blaming. You can forgive your husband or your wife or your ex. You can, you know, people continue blaming their ex. You can forgive your parents for what they did or didn't do. Forgive some ex-business partner or some ex-friend who could be maybe restored as a friend because of what they did to you. The same forgiveness that you receive, you can let it flow also that not only flow into you, but also flow out of you to others. And you must because and that's what Jesus talked about. Unless you forgive others, you will not be forgiven. 
Why? It's because it's the flow of forgiveness. It's like a river of forgiveness. And if you block it or dam the river out of you towards others, you're blocking it toward you at the same time. If you put up a dam to block the flow of forgiveness out of you, the same dam blocks the forgiveness toward you as well. So if you remove the dam and allow the flow, the flow of forgiveness to flow to others at the same time, you can receive that free flow of forgiveness to yourself. You forgive yourself. You forgive your parents. And right now I just want to encourage you just to say, I forgive everybody. And you can name those that you have felt hurt against. I forgive my parents. I forgive my ex. I forgive my husband or my wife. I forgive my brother or my sister. I forgive that person that used to be my friend. So and so I forgive that person that I used to work with or work for you just right now. Release forgiveness toward everybody. Let the flow, let the river flow. Let the river flow. Let the forgiveness river flow flowing toward you and out of you toward you to you and out from you receive forgiveness today and release and give forgiveness today and see your restoration and wholeness. And you say, but Cherry, how does this all have to do with pride? (laughs) Everything Everything it has all to do with pride. It's pride that blocks our forgiveness toward others. I can't forgive them. They, des- they, they don't deserve forgiveness. They deserve punishment. That's pride. That's pride. Humility forgives. Humility forgives. Pride blame shifts. Pride doesn't. Let me let me go on. Pride doesn't want to accept fault. But it also, in re, in the other direction, it passes the blame. It passes the fault to others. And blaming others, accusing others, saying others are at fault is an attitude of pride. Let me go on to another point in the lesson with some scripture. Finding fault in other people is also pride. Finding fault in other people. So let's call this number three characteristic. Number three characteristic of pride. And it's not that there is a priority. It's just a list. Fault, p- pride finds fault in other people. And another way to say that is being critical, judgmental, accusing. These are other terms that are all related. Being critical, judgmental, accusing, and finding fault with other people. That is pride. Why? Because it is setting yourself as their judge. Setting their se- yourself, let's use the word up. Then you can see the exaltation. Up. Setting yourself up as their judge. That's self-exaltation. You are exalting yourself above them. Counting yourself qualified to be their judge. So it's setting yourself up to judge them. That is pride. And in Romans chapter two, verse one, Romans two, one says, you therefore have no excuse. You who pass judgment on someone else. You who pass judgment. Well, let's use another term. Find the fault and accuse someone else. Find the fault in 
and accuse someone else. Criticizing someone else. It's all the same. You who pass judgment on someone else for at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself because you who pass judgment do the same things. Now, when you are finding fault in other people, and there are some people who are just very critical. And you get around them and they criticize, criticize, criticize. Judge, judge, judge. Find fault, find fault, find fault. If you're that kind of a person, you need to stop. Stop saying the faults. Stop seeing and pointing out faults in other people. Stop it. You know, this phrase comes to my mind. See no evil, hear no evil. See no evil, hear no evil. You should not see it and you should not listen to other people talk it. See no evil, hear no evil. You have to be blind. Make yourself Blind to the faults in others, or at least to have, if you see it, you have mercy. Okay, mercy is the opposite of judgment. Mercy is the opposite of judgment. And in James chapter 2, James 2, 13, I'm going to read this out of God's word translation. God's word translation says, no mercy will be shown to those who show no mercy to others. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So here we see that the opposite of judgment is mercy. Mercy is the opposite of judgment. And Again, James 2.13, this is God's word translation. No mercy will be shown to those who show no mercy to others. No mercy will be shown to those who show no mercy to others. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So there again, you that's why you've got to release forgiveness to others in order to receive forgiveness, because if you don't show mercy and let me again say mercy, forgiveness is the act of mercy. Forgiveness is the act of mercy. Mercy is extended to people to forgive them and help them when they don't deserve it. Mercy is extended to people to forgive them and help them when they don't deserve it. And you didn't deserve forgiveness. I never deserve deserved forgiveness. That's why it's mercy. It's God's mercy and it's grace. Grace is free, undeserved. So mercy has to do with forgiveness Grace has to do with being free and undeserving. And so we receive the forgiveness. The act of mercy is forgiveness. We receive mercy, but if we're going to receive mercy, we must show mercy toward others. And when you are criticizing others, if you find fault with others, If you accuse others, if you see other people's faults and talk about them, then you are exalting yourself as their judge. It is pride and it disqualifies you from receiving mercy. You know, I started making this practice that maybe when I'm driving, 
you know, when, when you're driving, people sometimes cut you off, cut in front of you, and then they just make you mad. Well, if you judge them, then you are judging yourself also because at some time or another, you probably cut somebody off, pulled in front of somebody and they didn't like it. And so at what point you have judged everybody else, you also are guilty of the same. So you are passing judgment on yourself. And we have all done just about every kind of wrong there is almost in this kind of thing. We have to be forgiven in in some way or another. We have made the same mistakes that we see other people make. And so we must be releasing continuous forgiveness and mercy on other people. So when you are critical, when you are finding fault, when you are accusing other people, you are setting yourself up as their judge, exalting yourself as their judge. Therefore, you are guilty of the same thing and you are guilty of pride self-exaltation, and you need to get off that high seat, get off the seat of judgment, and you humble yourself, forgive others, and have mercy. Now, I'm out of time again. I want to invite you to join me again next week, and remember, God loves you. You are blessed and highly favored by the Lord.